So in this lesson, we're going to be using complementary numbers with regards to the number five. Now, if you remember, just a little bit of a review, that the complementary numbers with regards to five are two sets of numbers. We have the number one and the number four. A number one and a number four, because one plus four is five. And the other set of numbers is the numbers three and two, a three and a two, or a two and a three. So the two sets of numbers are one and four, and then two and three. So the one and the four, they're, they're complements to each other because they both add up to five. And the other set of numbers is a two and a three, or a three and a two, and they're complements because they both add up to a five. Now, for just to review, going back to addition, if we were going to do the problem 1 plus 4, I don't have four beads to slide up here. So the, the thought process in doing 1 plus 4 with complementary numbers on the abacus, because this is the power of the abacus, is using complementary numbers. So the thought process is I subtract the complement of the number that I'm adding. So if I'm doing 1 plus 4, well, the complement to the number 4 is 1. So I subtract the complement, which is 1, and then add the number 5. Okay, so 1, did you, did you get that? So we're, we're, this is review going back. I know you already know this, but just wanted to review it. So 1 plus 4, the thought process is actually 1 minus 1 plus 5. So 1 minus 1 plus 5 is the same as 1 plus 4. And I hope that didn't totally confuse you. But that's, that's the thought process. So 1, take away the complement, which is 1 plus 5. And that's how we do the problem of 1 plus 4. Well, just the opposite of that, okay, if we're going to subtract, let's say we have the number 5, and we're going to take away 1 from that. Well, this, this is where a lot of people get stuck on the abacus, is like, well, where do I take away 1? It doesn't make any sense. And so here, here's the thought process. So with subtraction, we add the complement of the number we're subtracting. So if we're doing 5 minus 1, the complement to the number 1 is, the complement to the number 1 is 4. So that means I have to add 4 and then take away the number 5, or take away the heavenly bead. So 5 minus 1 is 4. And I know this might just be tweaking your brain and making your eyes start to twitch, but it's actually really cool and really easy once you get used to it. it it's a cool way to think about math because it makes you think about it in a different way, and it makes you think outside the box, I guess. Sir. So l let's just do that again because I want to make sure you got this. So, so let's go over the thought process. We have the number 5, and we want to take away 1 from that. 5 minus 1 is the problem we're trying to accomplish here on our abacus. So the complement to the number 1 is 4. So when I'm subtracting, I add the complement. And then I take away the heavenly bead. So that's how I did that. 5 minus 1 means I add the complement and take that away. 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay? All right. Let's see if you can wrap your brain around another problem. Let's start with the number 5 again. 5 minus 3. I have the number 5, and I want to take away 3 from that. Well, what is the complement to the number 3? It's the number 2. So 5 minus 3 means I add 2 and then take away the 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. Now, I know you can do that in your head. I mean, you're, you're a math wizard. You're good at things like this. You can, you can do that in your head. 
But the trick of the abacus is trying to let it do the thinking for you. Because once you get used to this, it, it does it for you. I mean, it doesn't move the beads by itself, but it's a it's a better it's a good way to think about this type of addition. Okay, here we go on the next one. We'll use the number five again. Five minus four. We have five, and we want to take away five, or we want to take away four from this number five. Well, what's the complement to the number four? The complement is the number one. So that means I add a one and take that away. Five minus four is one. Okay, we'll do one more light with the number five, then we'll get a little more tricky one. So five minus two. We have five and we want to take away two from that number. Well, what's the complement to the number two? Three. So that means I add three and then take that away. Five minus two is three. All right, here, we'll do a couple more. Let's put the number six on our abacus. Six, we have six, and we want to take from that two. Six minus two is the problem we're trying to do here. Well, I can't take, there's not enough beads to take away two from there because there's only one earthly bead on there. So six minus two. Well, what's the complement to the number two? It is three. So that means I'm going to add these three and then take that away. So six minus two is four. It's getting easier. I can feel it. I can feel it getting easier in your head. You're starting to get it. That's cool. Good job. Okay, eight minus four. So let's put the number eight on here. There's the number eight. And we don't have four beads to take away here. So eight minus four. Well, what's the complement to the number four? One. So that means we add the complement, take away that heavenly bead. So eight minus four is four. We will do one more, and then I think you'll have it. I bet you, if you don't, just come back and watch this again, okay? I know it might be a little bit difficult to wrap your brain around because you're thinking differently than you've ever thought. These sort of thoughts haven't been thought since the last time we did this lesson on addition. It's a different way to think, but you'll like it once you get used to it. Seven minus three. There is the number seven. We want to take away three from the number seven. We don't have three beads to move. Okay, so we know we have to use complementary numbers. So seven minus three. What is the complement to the number three? It's two. So I add two, take away that heavenly bead, and the number is four. Seven minus three is four. So just as a reminder, your trigger... Your trigger to know when you need to use the complementary thought process of using complementary numbers is when you don't, when you kind of get, when you realize you're stuck and like, oh, wait, I'm out of beads here. What do I do? Whenever you feel yourself kind of getting like that, that's when you know, oh, oh yeah, complementary numbers. I need to use the complementary thought process. So anytime you're running out of these beads is the time to use, whether in addition or subtraction, that's when you turn to the complementary thought process. So one more, just to wrap it up. Okay, six minus three. We have the number six, and we want to take away three from that. Well, I only have one bead touching here, and I can't take away three from that. Well, that's, okay, so my brain says, oh, Come on, use complementary numbers. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the complement to the number three is two. So I'm adding the number two, 
and taking away that. 6 minus 3 is 3. Piece of cake. I can tell you got this. So, print out your worksheet and go through the problems on there and work through it. Even though I know you can do these problems in your head. They're easy problems. But we're learning to use the abacus and trying to train our mind to think a little bit differently than we normally think in regards to simple problems. So, using your abacus, work through the problems and use complementary numbers on the abacus to solve them.